Hey guys, are you a big person? Are you looking for a new bike? Well, guys, follow me into Dave's Dimension. We're going to talk about bike buying, hits and misses, and the most important part, buyer beware. So let's get right into this on Dave's Dimension. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back again to Dave's Dimension. Welcome back again for another video. Welcome back to the channel. There's your home for tech, toys, and talk. And this time around, we're talking a little bit of tech and toy, I guess you could say, when it comes to bike riding. Now, those that know me, Dave's Dimension, well, uh, I like bike riding. It's something I've been doing for a whole number of years now. It's helped me lose weight. And, uh, you know, it's something I try to, use, I try to do to keep that weight off. Um, now... Also, if you notice, there's a little QR code right at the corner right up there. That is a, a direct QR code link to a donation page for the Ride for Roswell. Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Institute is based here in Buffalo, New York. And every year they do an annual cancer fundraiser by doing a bike ride. Now, I've been doing it for the past three years. My wife has been doing it for the past nine years. Now, it's a fun, awesome event, but guess what? You need a bike to ride in it, guys. So uh, this year, I'm finding myself in a very unique situation where I need to get a bike. You might be, you might be saying, "Hey, Dave, Dave, I've seen your vid, I've seen some of your videos. You have a bike." Well, let's get into this right now, guys. Now, anyone who's been following my channel over the past year or so, you know that last year I went in on this bike, the Trek Verve Two. Now, I went in on this bike because of a recommendation of a store general manager of a local bike chain here in the Buffalo, New York area. I'm not going to say any names. Um, suffice to say, this store chain has treated me awesomely in the past. Uh, previously, I had a uh, Trek bike, or not a Trek, but Electra Townie 7D. And last year, the wife wanted to get a new bike. So we got her new bike. We got her 9-speed through Electra Townie, which is actually owned by Trek. Uh, however... I said, hey, you know, I think I need a new bike. Uh, the general manager walked me around, and this was the bike he recommended, uh, the Trek Verve 2. It looks kind of like kind of like a, a beginner mountain bike, kind of hybrid, right? And that's what he pretty much said it was. But here's the thing. At the time, I was around 340, 350, and I said, well, I have concerns about my weight, would this bike sustain me? And he said, without without missing a beat. He said, yes, of course it will. This bike will hold you and more. Well, guess what, guys? It didn't. Okay? This is what happened. I get this bike, you know, ride it. Uh, the brakes weren't exactly, weren't exactly the greatest. They're hydraulic brake, disc brakes. So something I wasn't used to. I was more used to that clamp style with the brake pads. So... We take the bike in a few times, a spoke broke, another spoke broke. Over the course of a year, four separate events where two events where the spokes actually broke. The other two times the spoke popped out. I've had a number of flats already with this bike. Not one or two, more like three. And due to the unique nature of all these incidents, I was unable to ride this bike last year for the ride for Roswell. Yeah, I bought a new bike last year, and I couldn't even ride it for the ride for Roswell. Fortunately, the family friend who I sold my old bike to lent it back to me for that day so I could ride it in the ride for Roswell because I wound up doing a 30-mile ride on a towny cruiser. That's right. So, guys, this was the bike I did a 30-mile ride on at the ride for Roswell last year. This bike, you know, now this is the stock bike. Originally retailed for $629, plus I had to spend another almost $400 getting triple reinforced rims, uh, reinforced uh, rear cassette for the chain, uh, uh, for the gears on the back wheel, because at the time when I got the bike, I was 495 pounds at the time. And I'm about, right now, in all honesty, full disclosure, I'm 370 pounds. I gained 20 pounds, 20 to 25 pounds over the winter break. I need to shed this off. It's Buffalo. There's not a whole whole lot I can really do. You can't go bike riding. The weather's just been trash and on my asthma. There's not much I could really do this year. 
and that's on me. I own up to that. But since I don't have this bike anymore, I have the Trek bike, and I took the bike out about a week ago, and another spoke popped out. Okay, another spoke popped out. Not even a mile from my house. Okay, guys, not even a mile. I mean, not. I'm not putting down Trek. Okay, I'm sure this is a fantastic bike. Bike. I'm sure it's a fantastic bike, but guess what, guys? It's not for big people. I mean, the frame is good and solid, but the wheels, the fact that the spokes, I've had repeat issues. The rear hydraulic brake, I've had issues with, and that's probably because of me being a heavier person. But even the, der the derailleur by the chain here, this little component right here, which a lot, which pretty much is what shifts your gears, okay? This little silver part right here, this actually twisted about 45 degrees on the bike while I was riding it. It wasn't properly tightened. So that has to do with how the bike was assembled at the bike shop and also the false recommendations to the general manager who walked me through here. Um, this was a big letdown. Um, I mean, we interviewed the, the gentleman for a separate video and he gave a lot of great advice, but I just felt like I was kind of done wrong a little bit. I mean, maybe I should I should have done more research, to be perfectly honest. Um, when it comes to bike buying, guys, or when it comes to buying anything, you should do your homework. I, now, I work tech support, and one thing I always tell my customers is you have the greatest tool ever in your palm of your hand, your cell phone. Not because it's a cell phone, but because it's a camera. Open up that camera. Take pictures. If you're at a bike shop, take a few pictures of some of the bikes that they're recommending. And guess what? Go to some other bike shops. See what everyone is recommending. And if any of those recommendations are almost the same bike, well, maybe do a little bit more research. Check some online reviews. Look up some specs online. Now, I've reached out to a lot of different outlets, and they all tell me that this bike, this Trek Verve 2, is rated for a 300-pound limit. Obviously, I'm well above that. Even when I was at the store, I was around 340, 350, and I told the, the uh, manager that, and he said, oh, this bike can handle that and more. No, no, it can't. If I get if I hit a crack in, in a sidewalk, hit a small little tree branch or whatever, that's when this, these spokes were popping. That's when I got a flat. The brakes were failing. I've had just repeat issues, and I don't necessarily blame Trek for it, but... I blame being sold this. I mean, certain things were not taken into account. So maybe, maybe this manager was just about getting the sale. I get that he's running a business, but guys, honestly, I should have taken more time and done a little bit more research before pulling the trigger. I didn't. That's on me. So that's why I'm making this video, guys. I'm making this video because of you guys. I don't want you guys to be stuck in the same situation as me. Because guess what? A year later, um, I'm going to get the spoke fixed on on this bike and i'm going to get the rear brakes adjusted but guess what guys still i can't trust this bike for for my size and frame with the knowledge with the information i have i can't trust it so you know what that means i'm going to have to put it on facebook marketplace i'm going to have to try and sell it and i won't get anywhere near what i paid for it i paid about 900 dollars and change for this bike this is a 900 dollars bike after taxes and everything is said and done so what am I realistically going to get? I'll be lucky if I can get 300 for the bike or even 400 at best. Odds are I'm probably going to have to settle for like 250 or 275, which, you know, makes me feel like crap. I spent over $900 on this bike and now I'm going to if I'm lucky I'll get a third of that back. That's 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 a very real that's a very strong reality when it comes to bikes. The resale value plummets. It plummets to the ground like you wouldn't believe, guys. So, but that's my problem, but let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video, guys. If you're a big person, <clears throat> if you're a big person, let's say 300, 350, 340, 400, even 500, guys, I cannot speak highly enough of this bike. The bike I started with, Tony 7D Stepover. Now, I did have to spend about $400 total for a stronger rear, rear wheel cassette, reinforced rims not just regular reinforced 
but the equivalent to a triple reinforced rim for the front and rear. So, you know, it was about 900 and change, almost $1,000 for that bike. But at the time, I was 495 pounds. I would not, there's no place around me that would sell a bike that's automatically off the rack, so to speak, that's going to be perfect for and support your weight. You're not going to find that. So I had to make certain concessions. I had to admit that, hey, if I'm going to try and improve my health, if I'm going to be bike riding, if I need a bike, I have to spend the extra money and get this done. It was an investment. And I had that bike for six years, guys, six years. So it was well worth it. I made use of that bike and I sold that bike to a family friend and now she's using it to help with her health. So it's past forward. I only got 200, 200 bucks up for the bike, but Hey, I consider that, I consider that more than fair because it's, it's got a great home. It's helping my friend out, get, get their health better. But that's the reality guys. You're going to have to spend money if you want to be healthy, you want to have the chance to go out there and bike ride, you're going to have to spend a little. That's the hard truth, okay? <clears throat> now, there are other bikes out there that we can take a look at. Now, this you know, this is just one example. I mean, they have different colors. You can have a little bit of fun with this, right? Right? But they have other bikes. Now, Towny is actually, Electra is actually owned by Trek. They do have a few e-bikes. I'm going to try and pull up one of their e-bikes right now. Let's pull up one of their recreation electronic bikes. Um, you can tell that these are e-bikes because the lower tube is a little bit thicker. But look, take a look at this. Th they're charging you 25, or here, 3,000, uh, 3,800. I mean, some these are not cheap. I think it's more because of the name and the recognition. Um I've never ridden an e-bike, to be perfectly honest. And at one point in time, I was totally against e-bikes. But now, I'm kind of opening my eyes up to them just a little bit. Because e-bikes tend to have a thicker a thicker and fatter wheel. And obviously, those wheels tend to support larger people a little bit better. Okay? That's one. Two, if you're going up or down a really, high, a really steep hill or a ramp... It's kind of hard for you to pedal upwards, especially if you have asthma like I do. If you have any kind of respiratory issues, pulmonary issues, maybe you're an older person, you just don't have the bone bone strength. You just, for whatever reason, if you have any kind of physicality that limits you from going uphill, um, I want to say I think e-bikes are a, definitely a, a saving grace. Now, I was always against e-bikes for the sheer fact that I would see, I would see people, I would see goofballs out there on an e-bike, not even pedaling, not once, okay, not once, just relying on the power, the power of the battery and the motor, and that's it, I'm not a fan of that personally, but doing more research, there are different levels of e-bikes, there are e-bikes that have maybe five different pedal assists, where maybe, you know, you're pedaling, but there's a little bit of the motor that helps the rear wheel keep going, keep pushing you, so you can go up that hill, maybe you can't pedal it you know maybe you can't push it forward but that pedal assist makes it easier for you to do so and it maybe it's a little bit easier in your knees and your legs but hey when if you're doing it uphill or maybe downhill in some cases may, maybe that that helps you out maybe it does i don't know i haven't experienced an e-bike myself but i know that they have those different levels but then there's also the throttle level where you're not pedaling but you're using you're relying on the motor and i mean i can see some people might need to do that. Let's say you're doing a very long commute, okay? If I was bike riding, let's say, from home to work, and I needed to kind of pick up the, the speed a little bit, I could see using the throttle part, using the battery, using the motor function of it. I could potentially see that. But for people who are just doing a casual bike ride for recreation or for uh, exercise, you know, I would say only use the, the battery in extreme situations. If you're feeling out of breath and you, may, you need to get home a little quicker, you need to get somewhere a little, little bit faster, I could see it using the, those situations or going up up a hill. I could see that, okay? I can see that in those situations and those situations only. That's just my personal opinion. But Electra is not the only game in the town, boys. No, it's not. Guess who else do we have? We have a company called... 
let's check them out. Now, 630, I recently came across this brand um, a couple nights ago. They do regular bikes, but they also do e-bikes. Uh, you know, kind of the cru cruiser style, very clean looking, right? You know, digging on the nice, nice bright colors. You got different, you can do something a little bit darker. You got some play here. You know, they kind of have the old school retro feel right there, but they also do electric bikes. Now you can choose between women's or men's. Let's just take a look at the men's real quick because I'm a man. Uh, but let's take a look at some of these bikes. You have the step through. Because they don't make uh, necessarily, if it's been a while since you bought a bike, they don't, don't necessarily make a men's or a women's bike now. Now it's a step through or a step over. And they made the colors kind of universal now. Okay. Of course, we got our solid black, you know, back and black. Now you might be looking at the back of this. Now there is a rack here, but within that rack is your battery compartment. That's where all your power is kept right there. So it keeps a nice clean kind of look, aesthetic. And plus your motor is in your rear wheel hub. Okay. It's right there, right in the rear cassette right there. And yes, you can ride this as a regular bike or you can use the power for pedal assist. Okay. This is their website right here. This is 630.com. So yeah, they have a lot of offerings here, guys. A lot of things you can play around with. They, they even have a trike. Okay. They do have some of the fatter tires here. Now this one's only 16, uh, $1,680. It was originally twenty three seventy nine, so yeah, they have a lot of these marked down. Take a look at this two hundred fifty watt power, uh, eight hundred seventy five dollars. Now, the heavier you are, you're probably going to want more wattage. Okay, that refers to the battery and the motor power. So we got two fifty, two fifty. Here's five hundred. Uh, some people have recommended to me because of my height and weight that I might want a seven fifty. Okay, now this particular bike is not my jam, but it's got that 750 and it's a fold, which means it condenses. Some of these e-bikes, you can actually fold. Take a look at that right there, guys. Okay. It folds in half. You can throw this in the trunk of your car with room to spare. That's something that's pretty cool uh, because bike racks are not necessarily, one, they're not cheap. Two, um, they're not easy to necessarily take on and off your, your car. So um, the the fact that you can kind of condense this is cool because one you could stow this if you you know i'm in an apartment building i could stow that on my patio my patio porch without any concerns or maybe hey you take it to work you can put this in the lobby way of your work or maybe even who knows maybe you could stow it in your cubicle or whatnot i mean there's there's options there um you got the fat tires i mean i'm not crazy about the frame itself that's just me personally you know we all have our likes and dislikes they make a trike here now well, I like a lot of the price points here, but that's not the only game in town. There are a lot. There's thousands of other companies out there. Now, this one, this one I found called Nacto. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Nacto Bikes. They're based in California, and they seem. I mean, they they have some. As a business person, they have a lot of a lot of focus here. A lot of calls to action. We have multiple. We have different types of colors to show contrast here. Seven years they've been established. Over one hundred thousand riders. I mean. House, they have, of course, they have their, their awards right there. Fitness award from how good housekeeping. But that's not where, why I'm here about. Take a look at some of the bikes here. Some of them, they have the battery built right inside the lower tube. $1,200 for this Santa Monica bike, okay? They have this pony for $709. $709. That's cheaper than some of the cruisers I was looking at just a few minutes ago, guys. Yeah, they have the bigger tires. And again, supposedly on some bikes, the bigger tires will help support more weight. Bike repair. Now, they do do bike repair in California, but they also have online support. And they even say here that they build and test the bikes about 90% complete before they hit you because then you just have 10% of the bike to assemble yourself. Not bad, not bad at all. There's so much here that you can do. They... they, they are very responsive by the way i even messaged them about my size and weight and they responded to me within a day so very responsive that's one of the best things i could hope for let's take a look at some of their e-bikes now these you can see the battery compartment but what's great is i believe and correct me if i'm wrong you can actually remove these take them inside so that's something that's pretty cool take a look at some of these e-bikes here 
739-999-729-859-739. Take a look at these guys. These are bikes that if we look at another another site, we're probably talking 15, 20, maybe uh, or 1,500, maybe 2,000, maybe 3,000. And look, most of these are between 1299, 199, 709. Uh, we have another 709 here. We have a lot of different styles. The thicker tires, more of the, uh, you know, almost like an American chopper style right here. Uh, for $1,200, take a look at this, guys. This seems pretty damn affordable. You know, here's one, San, the Santa Monica here. They have it on sale, uh, $1,099. They do have some different colors. I'm just not feeling that brown seat, you know. I need something a little bit wider. But here's an example of that cassette. This is where your motor is kept, right inside the rear wheel, okay? There you go. There are extras you can purchase, like if you wanted, uh, you know, a stronger battery you can, or an extra battery you can do that right there okay they have the little computer accessories if you want it's all right there guys um i really think this is a no-brainer guys um if you're looking for e-bikes i think necto is a really good company to check out i'm not affiliated with them in any shape or form um but looking at some of the price points these are just these are just three different sites we've looked at now I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Yes, you can find e-bikes by various companies on Amazon. But guys, buyer beware. Buyer beware. Because you don't know. This might not be sold by the actual retailer, by the manufacturer. It may be sold by a third party. There may be defects you're not aware of. Now, I will say this. I will say I will give my full blessing on buying a bike from Amazon if... If it's a specific bike that you've confirmed is perfect for you, you, that you know for sure it's good for people who are your size, frame, and weight, go for it. If you know that, that let's say they have a Cannondale or a Schwinn or whatever it is you're looking for, if it's something that you think is going to be perfect for you, go for it. Go for it, especially if it's a good deal on Amazon, then go for it by all means, my friend, okay? But don't just go to Amazon and click on the first bike you, you see and buy that right away. Do your research first, guys. Go to the retailer re uh, websites. Look up all the reviews you can on various websites, okay? Do your math. Do your homework. Do the time and do it right, guys, okay? So that's where we're at, guys. This is a cautionary tale of do not just trust what the salesperson says. Do your research, okay? Do your due diligence, okay? Little background, you know? When you buy a cell phone, you don't just buy a cell phone because it's the latest and greatest. Well, maybe sometimes you do. But you want to know how's the battery life? What's the camera like, you know? Recharge time. You want to know those. Same thing when it comes to bike. You're, you're not going to buy a brand new bike every year. If you are, you're probably buying a Walmart bike, let's be honest. But you want something that's durable. You want something that you can feel safe on. And that you know you can rely and trust on that bike. So yeah, you are going to wind up spending a lot, probably a little bit more than what you're expecting to. Am I honestly? If I need, if I go for an e-bike or even a non-e-bike, odds are from from what I've been looking at different different uh, stores around the area, I'm probably going to be spending around fifteen hundred dollars, if not more, if not more, for a bike. Um, and honestly, that's fifteen hundred dollars I don't have right now. So guys, there we are. Um, Again, I can't say enough. Buyer beware. Do your time. Do your time. Do your research. Make informed decisions. You know, there you go. What more can I say? Don't just take the salesperson at their word. Do your research. Take your time and do it right. And guys, if you like this video, give me that thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know in the comment section below. Tell me you don't want to see more videos like this. Give you know, put me in my place. And guys, if you like this video, as always, thumbs up. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit. Hit that bell for notifications. We have a lot more content coming out later this year. Um, I'm going to be filming a lot of stuff the next couple of weeks, so hopefully we're going to have a steady stream of videos coming out. And, guys, don't forget, this spring we have the Stream for the Cure to help fundraise for the Ride for Roswell. Speaking of Ride for Roswell, well, it's right there. I got the QR code right there above me. Right ka. Well, right ka. Uh, you can just scan that QR code, break out your cell phone, scan that QR code on the screen, or better yet, 
go down below into the video description below and you'll find a direct link to the ride for Roswell and to the donation page. Please, if you want to help out my channel, sure, we have the cash app, but I want you guys to donate to the ride for Roswell first. They need it more than I do right now. Every dollar, every nickel, every dime gets them a step closer to research, developing new vaccines, new treatments, and a cure. So guys, help me ride, ride for Roswell, guys. So, guys, until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Dimension saying keep on busting. And you know what I'm going to say. I will always catch you on the flip side. Take care.